I will not, I promise not to go too much into detail here because this is my pet subject and there's always a, 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 a temptation of the orator to um, go too much into the depth of the pet subject. But antitrust law is a very complex and material subject. Uh, the European Community, uh, the European Commission has said, said, said we need a new economic approach. We need a new economic doctrine. We have to look at the effect of cartels rather than at the restrictions of competition. And by the new economic approach, which is a rather economic doctrine, the discretionary power of the European Commission has been enlarged enormously. Or as I said to my colleagues uh, uh, when we had this meeting, the European Commission has uh, voluntarily ignored uh, big mergers in countries where market-dominating positions are the result, like France, and has thoroughly investigated into situations um, where markets were concerned which are which were less relevant, such as Belgium. The biggest case in that context is the GDF Suez case. <clears throat> I think we have the fundamental problem about the concept of the European community. When I had a challenging discussion with former European Commissioner Barnier in Paris, he said that the European Commission is uh, considered to be a Prime Minister of Europe, a Prime Minister of Europe. This is the French understanding of the European Commission, voluntarily acting um, in the name of certain political objectives. But that has no foundation in the legal fundamentals of the European Treaty. On the contrary, the European Commission is nothing but the guardian of the treaty. And as a matter of fact, the European Commission has turned out to be far more than the Prime Minister, but as a, as a government as such. Um, let me give you a few examples about um, the uh, uh, discretions we have identified in our trial against the, uh, the Lisbon Treaty in another field. We talked a lot about uh, the role of the European Commission, about unauthorized actions, and actions which are illegitimate and insofar uh, incompatible with the principle of democracy. There is another phenomenon in the European uh, community which deserves uh, explanation. That is the particular legislative procedure which is called trilogue. As you can imagine, uh, a law or an act of parliament before coming law is introduced into a parliamentary body. The parliament has the right to take the initiative. Parliament can deal with everything. Um, this is not the case in Europe. The only body having the role of the monopoly for initiatives is the European Commission. And the Euro European Commission um, tries to peruse the treaty in its own interest, finding new fields of action, uh, such as the emission trading system, which is not at all, uh, which cannot be identified uh, with, the, with the treaty as such. And then the European Com the Commission um, conceives a directive. And um, al although the Parliament might be of the opinion that the directive uh, takes the wrong road, the European Parliament says, well, we have a co decision right. Why not sharing uh, the interest with the European Commission? This was the case with the emission trading system invented last year, introduced to the Parliament at the in late December, no debate was held about the emission trading system, a system of emission trading certificates which will uh, be a heavy burden for the European industry and uh, might endanger the competitiveness of uh, our industries. But it was, uh, so to speak, bargained between the Council, Parliament and the Commission, behind closed doors, of course. So, we argue that the compensation, the democratic compensation, which would have been needed in order to legitimate more transfers of the national sovereignty to the European community, that that democratic compensation is not represented by the co-decision right of the European Parliament. On the contrary, the European Parliament is part of the cartel, of the, Europe, of the Brussels cartel. This is part of a Euro class of people shifting from the Commission to the Parliament 
from the European Court of Justice, from uh, the European Court of Justice to the Minister, to the Council of Ministers. So there is a conglomerate of powers which are auto-referential, self-referential, and which lack a countervailing power such as we find it in the United States and the Congress. Where, as you know, the Democratic leader says, I like Mr. Obama, but I don't follow him anywhere. We don't have a countervailing power in uh, Europe, and we don't have that countervailing power either in the European Court of Justice, because the European Court of Justice has a very rough and generous uh, form of uh, evaluating uh, the Commission. The European Court of Justice thinks of uh, itself as being part of the system and feels very much committed to uh, the objective of European integration and has always interpreted uh, all sorts of articles uh, as well as the treaty as well as the, the treaty as well as the, uh, the directives in a very pro-European and very integralistic um, uh, way. So our complaint is based on two fundamental um, accusations of, of critics. The first one is that inasmuch as the competences of national sovereignty are transferred to Brussels, there must be a new legitimacy, a democratic legitimacy, and on the contrary, more competences are transferred to Brussels, more the legitimacy is disconnected, the German people is disconnected from what is happening in Brussels. And secondly, there is no longer a partition of powers, but there is a mixture, a melting pot of competences, uh, being more or less guided by the European Commission, which is masterminding uh, the European uh, community as such. That's why we felt obliged to um, attract public opinion through our complaint uh, to these uh, uh, deficits of democracy and deficits of rule of law. And I'm very happy to have been able to expose to you some of the most uh, substantial items. Thank you very much.